Right then, on to some interesting Turek V10 stuff. So, we've got a few little bits and bats laid out here for when we go off-roading. The main one being the tyres. Originally I'd said I wanted some Toyos, eh, sorry, Yokramas, but I emailed Yokram and they said that size is only available in the USA, which a bit annoying. So I found these Maxis, what are they, Big Horn or something stupid like that. These are just over 32 inch in diameter, which, and they're quite, they're quite narrow, 275, so they should fit pretty well on this. The only thing I'm a bit worried about is the standard tyre is quite close. Probably not the best thing, probably can't even see it on here. Try and get my torch on. But it is a little bit close to the, um, this knuckle here on the suspension already. Obviously once we go for a taller tyre, because we're about three inch taller, so an inch and a half more, we're going to be close here. So we might have to order some spaces. We'll see about that one. But I think they'll fit in the arches, but we'll see. And they should offer plenty of grip. Do we like them? And I think it'll look pretty cool. So the other big ticket item is the winch, which this was supplied to us from Jonathan at Bishop Lifting, as well as some of these uh, D-links and stuff like that. So the idea I've got with this, I'm going to try and make the grill pop out independently to the bumper at the minute. You've got to take the bumper off to get that out. And then we'll sit that on top of the crash bar and strengthen the crash bar and either bolt it or pin it so that I can just, when we're going off-roading, throw the tyres on, throw the winch on, and away we go. So we'll see about that. Obviously, very important to have tow ropes, which I've got two of them. There's only one here, but two of these proper tow ropes. Which these are... I don't know how long they are. These are from Dana, um, 10 meter. So that should get you out of any problems. Four D-links. And I don't know if people know, but these Turegs, they've got one on each corner. For some reason, the cars only come with one, but you put your normal toe eye in there. So I'm gonna get another three toe eyes and we'll have one on each corner already ready there. And usually when we were off-roading, we had the the D-link and the tow rope at least attached to one corner and then shoved in the window or wherever and then if you get stuck in some mud you just throw the tow rope out rather than getting stuck into it. Just got some random slings which they were from Bishop. Um, I have got a snatch block somewhere for the winch, no idea where it's gone but we'll see. Obviously shovel, little shovel, this is our George's shovel, I've pinched it this morning so hopefully he's not too upset he can't dig my grass up all day while I'm not there. Little sore if there's any trees in work, you will scratch death out of everything or if you just physically can't get through, chop a few trees down. We've got these track mats, these are from when we had the Christmas party, I'm not sure if we've got any videos that we can stuff in at that. That were a few years ago now. I bought these for then and then I, I sold them to Rob and then I've the uh, Indian given them and took them back off him. But whether these are required or not, I don't know, but they'll come in handy at some point. Jump pack and compressor. Obviously we're gonna be letting tires down and messing about and if we have a problem. It's not a fancy one, it's just whatever, I have that at home, just in case I end up getting caught short. Then we've got the works cordless jet wash, they're absolutely mint. Obviously, if everything's absolutely sludged up to death, just drop that little little thing in a puddle, whatever it is, a little filter, drop end of that in a puddle, and away you go, can at least clean clean it off a little bit. Got some other stuff as well, but Danny didn't want them in this video because he said that it weren't very photogenic. We've got some rags, baby wipes, some more tow ropes. We've got just an Alfred's toolkit that we're gonna take. Um, a couple of bits that we ain't got yet, I need to get an hatchet. So we've got an hammer and a, something to chop stuff up with. Um, some tin snips and stuff like that in case we get anything wrapped around wheels and tyres. This is all from when we've been off-roading before and we've got caught out. So hopefully all this is going to go in a box in the back, strapped down, and we never have to use any of it. But we'll see. We'll try and get the tyres on after we've done what we're doing 
tuning wise because I don't want to run it on the dyno with these tyres. But I'm not planning on going too crazy with it just yet. Just a straightforward remap should do what we need to do. So yeah, that's the off-road stuff. We'll uh, have a look at the rest. So obviously, if we're going to be taking this off-road, I've driven it 100 miles on the way here and highlighted a few issues that I'm not very happy about. But as with any car before we do anything, we always want to do a full service, even if it's got a receipt in there saying it was done 10 miles ago. You never know what somebody's doing, whether they've just stamped a book or printed a receipt. So it's always a good idea just to do it. So this is pretty much everything. There's a couple little bits missing that I would like to do, but we'll just run through quickly what we've got, what we're going to do, and then some other stuff that we're not planning. So this has got an absolute ton of oil in it. I think 11 and a half litres engine oil, plus all this in the gearbox and the diffs. So there's going to be a lot of fluid to drain out of this. So we'll drain it into this drum and see, uh, see how much we actually get out of it. But basically we've got the transmission oil here, which this is the only sort of non-genuine oil that we're putting in. It's just normal, nothing too fancy. It's a Acing Warner gearbox. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine litres of that to go in. Plus, this is the gasket uh, and filter kit. I don't know what them little things are, some little spaces or whatever for that. So that's not expensive. So we're going to do that on this. This is on the six-speed gearbox. Then we've got the rear diff oil, which is this stuff. But then you've also got, because it's got the locking diff, it's like an Aldex coupling type thing. That's for that. So this is some fancy, it's like, it's like water that. So that I'm assuming that's for the clutch pack on that. And then we've got the front diff oil as well. So that's a different part number to that stuff. Oil filter for the engine, fuel filter. Oh lifting tab on it and um, I noticed on the way home it weren't getting it were getting warm ticking over it gets to like 80 85 degrees ticking over but then as soon as you start moving it'll drop to like 60 so that's apparently the thermostat which this is I believe it must be a genuine af like an aftermarket uh, OE aftermarket part it's got the Volkswagen stamp on it 105 degrees so yeah it's gonna get warm this and um, so yeah, not a massive job. I think this is one of the few parts on this car that you can change without taking the engine out. A little gasket for that. Pollen filter. Pair of air filters. Also it's got one at each side. So yeah, it's gonna get a full full set. I'm gonna flush the coolant as well, and there's a tiny little coolant leak um, on one of the pipes. Uh, we'll go around the front, in fact. A bit easier to talk about stuff while we can see it. So yeah, air filters are in there. We're going to clean all the air box out as well because apparently they get absolutely gunged up. I'll just have to pull that out of the way. Let's take this off, which that can stay off there because we're we'll, uh, messing about. So this one's, because this is a DPF model, it's got the electronic EGR valve. So we'll just, when we've got it on the dyno, we'll just, for now, we'll just unplug these because we've not got the um, EGR deletes on the shelf that we normally keep. So I'll put a picture of what they look like up and we'll do them uh, another time. The tandem pumps are known to leak on these. So we're gonna dig deep in there and just get a mirror down the back and see. But I believe at the time of doing the EGRs would be a better time to do that, but we'll see. And Shaq assured me when I bought it that there were no leaks on this car. So I'm assuming he had a mop because there were no leaks underneath it, but oh, you can't see now, we've pulled it forward a little bit. But there's a few little drips there, and yes, there's a little puddle sort of around here somewhere. So there's something leaking down here. It's probably the rocker cover underneath here, or it's the tandem pumps, but we'll see. There's a tiny little coolant leak on this pipe here, which I don't know what we're going to do with that, but we'll just change it and see. But I'm going to flush all the coolant out when we do when we do the thermostat. Obviously, we're doing the engine oils and every other oil. Um, we're going to do the brake fluid, and we'll check the power steering fluid's all right. We've got a load of that stuff on the shelf if that wants changing. Because when you're off-roading, 
Yeah, there's not tons in there. But you absolutely hammer the steering when you get stuck. So we'll see about that. And then basically just full health check underneath. Make sure it's all good. There's no air con gassing. That is uh, one job to do, but I'm not in a not in a massive rush to do that. Not really a big deal yet. It's cold. And one of the other jobs that we're gonna try and do, which I have to get on the floor here. Somebody's dropped a sweet it. So this is the absolute massive silencer. So what we're gonna do here, if we can, we will, if we can't, we won't, but I'm gonna try and make and jig up some silencer delete. So we'll chop it here somewhere and then we'll make it so that you can just literally join the, ta the standard tailpipes back up. So the tailpipes fit pretty nicely in the bumper. And I believe from revving this up on the spot and it's smoking a little bit and seeing state at tailpipes, I think uh, this has already had the DPFs at least hollowed out. So we've not checked in the software yet to see, but we'll get it on the ramp. We'll have a look. We'll start the service. We'll go from there. Let's have a look. This is my leak free car. Now looking at that, that's engine oil and probably diesel. So I'd say, looking at where this is, I mean, it's all leaking, it's absolutely wet through. That'll be tandem pumps. So definitely a mop at this car dealership before I got there. Front diff, liter oil to go in there. So we'll drain that there. And then that's the fill bung. Level fill, that should be good, pretty easy. Gearbox drain here, and oh dear, a bit wet round here, but that is where the DPF should be. That's a pressure sensor, the before and after temperature sensor, I believe, or just the after temperature sensor. And that's on both sides. So yeah, somebody's definitely had the DPS deleted, quite a crude, crude little piece, but it does the job, I suppose. I'm assuming we're missing some oil here because that's not part of the gearbox. I need to um, I'll take a picture to remind me. That's the center differential. I'll take a picture of that, and I can't forget. So I need to check we've got the oil for that. I'd assume it's the same as the one for the rear. But we'll see, that looks, that looks like it'll hold a fair bit of oil. Maybe a couple of litres in there. Everything else looks all right. I think we're probably going to disconnect the anti-roll bars. Quite an hefty thing, like 30 mil or something. So hopefully that doesn't cause any problems driving it on the road. I'll let Owen dig deeper on that one. A bit of uh, crusty stuff at exhaust. Oh yeah, the centre prop sort of joint is leaking grease, so I we'll have to see about a seal for that. Rear diff, that's the locking portion there, which is really crusty, but it should work. So yeah, that takes some more out. So drain bung there. Where's the fill bung for that? Can't see the fill bug. Oh, Owen's not going to enjoy doing this one. The fill bunk will be somewhere. We'll find that. Yeah, and then the silencer. So if we chop it, if we chop it there, should just about to be able to get a slip joint or two on there. And just bend that. To there. Yeah, that should work. So that'll be quite an involved job for hangers. I 
think Dan can do that. Loves out like that. So we'll um, we'll get the servicing done first, and then we'll uh, get it over to the fab shop. Look at these tyres, absolutely dead. Now this car, I think this car could have been a bit cheaper, but no buyer's remorse just yet. We've not blown it up, so we'll see what it doesn't die now before we get too uh, excited. So, the very boring and arduous job of getting the oil into all the diffs is done. I think I need to double check on the fill quantity of this because we've got three litres of oil for this rear diff and I only managed to get about two in. So, I need to double check. I think looking at this that I've done here, that's where it got to with the engine oil. So that should be 11, 12 litres. That's a gearbox which should have been nine litres, which it's not, so that's not good. That's a front and the middle diff, which is a couple of litres. And that's a rear diff that should have been a bit more. So we've got, that's a good, I think, 19 litres come out of that. So there should have been more than that. Should have been nearly filling that up. So we need to just, we'll triple check the fill quantity on that but it should be all right, this is how much is coming back out of that. I put, I put just under three in there, and then we're just about getting all that out. So make sure that doesn't overflow, that'd be not good. So next job, it's like a job walking from one that carts it over. We've got to pull this off, which means taking a few little bits of crap out of the way. Clean it all up before we take the pan off so we don't get any debris inside. Then we'll get that done. And I think I'm just about going to have Owen helping me now, so I should be, uh, be able to get this done a bit quicker. There's a lot of cleaning and stuff that wants doing beforehand, so I'm more than capable of doing that, I think. So I don't know how much Danny's going to speed this camera up, but it's a good job there's no sound because I was swearing. I know why Owen swears all the time now, but that air filter, we're an absolute pain in the ass to get out. And the fuel filter, hardest thing known to man to pull out and then to push back on, which were a bit of a pain, but Owen sorted that out. He's sorting this out. So we started disconnecting a few little bits to get to the thermostat, which is here. But we, hang on, sit just, <laughs> you just dropped something down there yeah, then. Oh, what have you done that for, Mella? So, we've got to take these two pipes off, disconnect to plug down there, that should come out. So we drained the coolant from this, which we didn't get a lot out, but we got that much out, probably 
four litres or something. So hopefully all what's in top of engine by disconnecting this and blowing it out of there. So yeah, we should, uh, shouldn't be too far off. When we took the fuel filter out, it got all this rusty crap in the bottom and fuel filter weren't very really clean. So that's one positive. And it got Ken and Nigel air filters, which look terrible. So we're glad we've took them out, put genuine back in. So a bit more swearing to do, a bit more trying to find that part that Danny's just, for some reason, smashed down into the world's most compact engine bay. Oh, it's under airbox. It's under airbox, right where we needed to get it. It's not magnetic. So we should have this uh, serviced very soon. A couple of little bits underneath to do, things to check. I've cracked track rods off so we can get alignment done on it because it was pulling all over the road, which is probably not helping tyre wear and tyre wear is not helping it pulling, which is uh, annoying. So yeah, we're, uh, we're getting there. This video has probably been the worst one we've done for a while. So the service is just about done and we just need to put pollen filter in which needs to be done when it's uh, off the ramp. So as I said before, the EGR valves, EGR deletes that we do, they've not been machined yet so waiting for them to come next week. The oil that you could see leaking under seems to be coming from the rocker cover gasket and possibly the tandem pump. So we're going to do all that in one go. The tandem pump gasket, so the vacuum and fuel pump, that's cheap, that's a few quid but then there's just a fuel pump on itself. That's an absolute fortune. And they're a pig to get to, it's gonna be quite a big job. So hopefully we can uh, get it sorted pretty quickly. We'll do it all in one hit. We have found the source of our, where's that torch gone? I'll see my phone. We have found the source of our, uh, let you just see, you see the bubbles on that little brass valve there. So that's the, I think they're the residual pressure valve or whatever you want to call them. But that's like a sort of, to keep the pressure in the bag if the pressure in the system's lower and that's obviously not working and or leaking. So we'll order some new ones of them as well, which they'll not be expensive. Pretty common on airlift, air ride cars. So over to the four poster for the alignment because the steering wheel's like that and it pulls like that and that's why these tyres are dead. Then it'll be the fun stuff. So if we don't see anything else when we're doing the alignment, that's boring. This is the end of the video. Thank you for watching. Check in for the next video.